Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video, I am once again taking a look at one of your designs that you have linked me in the comments section of one of my videos. For today, we're looking at another land transport vehicle, and this one is called the Rumbler Transport, which is this odd thing right here. So it's a large rover with lots of large cargo containers inside it, lots of hydrogen tanks to travel around the planet and move from place to place searching for ore or perhaps just being used as a mobile base. Pressing F10 and finding the Rumbler in the spawn menu, there it is. This thing is, apparently is 894 large blocks, it doesn't seem like it, so we'll just double check that, but it does require decorative block number one and number two DLC packs to fully function. And there we are, so it's 447 blocks, with of course a projector making up the rest of that. So we're going to start by taking a look around the outside, and then we're going to drive this around, see what it can do, and launch it off a cliff to see how well it handles that. So, coming around to here, at the very front, this is what we get. So we've got our industrial cockpit, which sits at the very top of our catwalk, with an interior turret just below it. Just below that and down here, we've got some tyres as a small little bumper, so if you were to crash into a tree, it shouldn't do too much damage to you. In between both the cockpit and our little bumper wheels, we've got a small living quarter working area type place, which has been completely surrounded by our new rails, which do look great. We can come inside here and take a better look. So we've got our DLC sofas that sit around there so you can have a nice relaxing time on your journey, perhaps if the driver is going somewhere and you just want to kick back and view your environment, you could do. Right next to that, we've got our projected table with a projection of this current vehicle. And if you are having performance problems while using this vehicle, you can always switch that off, because that will help you a lot. Next to the table, we've got a control seat, which does similar things to the cockpit up there, except it can't drive the vehicle. This is going to be for manual control over the turrets and switching off different things around the ship. As we come around and behind our little command table type thing, we've got ourselves a chair and table just to have a little look-see at our vehicle. And then around to here, we've got some button panels for the lights, the hydrogen engines and the hydrogen tanks. We then got some lockers and some cryopods for a quick little recharge and to put away your tools, say if you're doing a suicide run. And then just above that, you can probably hear it by now, we've got some hydrogen engines to power this thing. And then our catwalks that come from the bottom all the way up to our industrial cockpit and they do look bloody fantastic. On this side over here, we've got our toilets, just in case you need it, and a small cargo access to dump stuff into our large cargo containers. We've got a bunch of LCD screens going all the way around this area telling you everything you need to know about this vehicle, such as its auction tanks, the hydrogen tanks and what's in the cargo containers. Moving all the way across to the opposite side, we've got a similar setup, except this one is telling us our O2H2 generators, if our engines are on or off, and our battery power. And just dropping down onto this side, we have our survival kit to recharge and respawn on, and another cargo access. Just in front of this, we've got a ladder that goes all the way down to the ground, allowing you to hop up and grab it without using your jetpack. And then as we come, in fact, let's go around to this side because it's got the sun on it. We have a little light next to it to make sure you can always find it in the darkness. Moving along and over to here, I did forget about the spotlights, which have been angled via a rotor, and the rotor has been covered up by our catwalks. There is that. It's a very nice way of hiding that block and making it more square. And over here, we've got our large wheels that come across to the main body of this vehicle, which is four large cargo containers with a connector on both sides. As we move towards the back, we got ourselves a small decorative tyre. Well, it's not a small one, it's a large decorative tyre, but you can always use that as emergency resources to repair one of your other tyres, say if it got damaged. And then around the back here, these are our large hydrogen tanks to fuel our engines and to resupply our jetpack. Just below that, we got some more wheels that act as a small bumper, and some spotlights in red to be our brake lights. Coming all the way up to the top, we've got some connectors there to connect up and recharge your fuel tanks if you needed to. And then moving along to here, we've got an antenna just to broadcast wherever you are, and some more little catwalks. A laser antenna is there if you need it, and we can look down through these catwalks 
at the conveyors going across to our cargo containers. And there is our programmable blocks being hidden away in their nice safe area. Back along the top, we got some turrets to protect you. It's not overkill on this. In fact, I think it's a perfect amount of turrets on this one. Where we've got two normal Gatling guns and one interior turret at the front, which is perfect. Then over here, we've got some interior pillars with our rotating lights. If you needed to broadcast where you were, say if you were stuck and needed rescuing. And that is the top of the rotors right there. If we come and drop down and underneath, there is a little bit of detail under here in the form of some blocks in our battered armor blocks, which does look bloody fantastic. And as we move along to the back, we then have some sneaky connectors right there in case you have a small ship that can slip underneath this and connect up to it. Then towards the back, there we go. It's a fantastic design with a very odd front that I do like. So pressing F6 and getting into here, let's go and hop down to the ground and get into this properly. So we're down on the ground, we don't really have to worry about too much, we can just jump up and grab it. We can get into the vehicle all nicely. And there we are, up to the top there. Do a quick little recharge, dump some stuff into there if we want to, and away we go. Here's our little chair to sit on, we get a very nice view, and an encouragement turret there to make sure we don't misbehave. Just above us, we got our radar system, so if you were sitting on this chair around here, we could look up and make sure there's no hostile enemies or neutral enemies coming towards you. On this chair over here, before we go into the main cockpit, this is what we get. So number one, two, and three are for manual control over our turret, which is great. Speaking of the interior turret, you could go one further and do something that I do enjoy doing, and that is changing the interior turret to be anti-missiles only. So you're relying on the Gatling guns at the back, but then this one will be used to snipe off any missiles coming towards you and potentially destroying the cockpit. But anyway, we've got controls for our antenna, our laser antenna and beacon. We've got our lights on and off, and then two timer blocks, which are to start up all the lights on this thing and to turn off all the lights on this thing. On tab number two, we then got a few more options over here, such as turning off all the turrets, our hydrogen engines, where we can just plop them off and stop them from being so noisy, and then our O2 H2 generator on and off. Tab number three and all that are empty, so we can then come out of this and walk up to our main cockpit. So around here, we've got our little toilet and another cargo access. Around here, we can then access our large cargo containers if we wanted to. So there we go. And then around and up to here, we can see our auction tanks all the way up there. Then coming across to here, we've got a nice little view next to our cockpit. I do like this. I don't know why I like it so much. Yes, anyway, getting into that, we can get into the side or through the back, depending on what you want to do. And these are the options we get. So number one is for our manual brakes on and off. A bloody good button to have to save you from disconnecting all your connectors and perhaps having a massive disaster. Number two is for the rear camera to make sure you're connecting up properly and to make sure you're not going to crash into anything while reversing. Number three and number four are to control the turrets. So we can just switch them off or switch them on. Number six is for our lights and number seven is for our rotating lights right there. Let's just switch that off and switch that on. And number eight and number nine are like the other seat where we can turn off all the lights and turn them all on via a timer block. Tab number two, we've got manual controls over the gun if we did need to do that. So we can get rid of that little thing over there. Like so. Then we come into this one and just turn it around. We are upside down on this so it could get a bit wibbly wobbly while trying to control it. I think it was over there. There's the base. Let's go blast that. And then number... Five, six, seven, exactly the same as the other seat where we can switch them on and off as we please. Tab number three, we've got a few more options. The antenna, the beacon, and the laser antenna make their return. But we do have a few more options to go with it. Our battery into recharge or auto. Our hydrogen tank on and off. Our oxygen tanks on and off. Tab number four are for our connectors all the way around this vehicle. Tab number five is for turning on stock power on and off, so we can switch them on off if we wanted to. And number six has nothing on, so it's now time to drive this thing around. So pressing number one to turn off our brake, this is what we're getting. We're a slow, lumbering vehicle, which is to be expected from a mobile base. And do ignore them over there. I was just testing a few little things out for my ship. 
Yes, yeah, going around here, we can get up to about 30 meters per second, which is adequate for moving around the map and finding those precious resources and start mining them. Then we can press number two to view straight behind us and all that. But now let's just come around to here and start launching ourselves off a cliff. Now the unfortunate thing about this design is you will be bottom heavy after taking a lot of goods inside it. Oop. And you know what happened there? There was no gyroscopes on it. So we lost the front, but the back is safe. So let's just spawn in a new one over there. So driving around on the ice, this is what we get. It's basically the same as before, where we're getting roughly 26 meters per second, which is a little slower than going across the grass. But yes, this vehicle does have one fatal flaw of not having a gyroscope on there. So you can't rotate this a little bit while going off an edge, which would have avoided the crash that happened a few minutes ago. But for you, it'll be a few seconds ago, but I had to edit a few bits out. It does trouble spawning this vehicle. So now we're just going to ride along over to there. Let's do a little hop. There we are. And we're going to go uphill. Now, because of the design of the ship, which I mentioned earlier, hopefully I didn't edit it out, is that this is going to be a very bottom heavy ship, which means going uphill could prove a little bit of a problem unless you max out the power. Now, we might be able to get up there. No, it doesn't look like that. And if I try and jump, we're just going to start going back down. Let me see if I can just fiddle with the wheels and get it up that hill. So coming around to here, let's find our wheels. There we are. We want to max out the power, max out the strength. Height offset. Yeah, let's just put ourselves all the way up. Probably not a good idea to have them all the way up like that, but... Just go like this. Find our wheels once again, because I forgot to check. Speed limit. Nah, we want unlimited speed. So here we go. With unlimited speed, we're now doing roughly 50 meters per second. Can we get up there? Yes, we can. We are flying a bit. The gyroscope would have really helped there. But now we are up and can continue on with our journey unless that tree is going to stop us. Oh, goodbye tree. That was odd. It needed to go. It's people's needed it. Yes, it's a very interesting design with how the front has been set up. It's almost as if you could encase it with glass if you wanted to. If you didn't like having this openness, that is one option you could do and we've kidnapped a tree. Oh dear, it appears we've got another tree now on our adventure. Yes, this thing is just mowing through trees. It does not matter. There goes another one. Those little bumpers at the front are really helping there. I'm just going to keep going deforesting this area. It's a shame wood isn't a resource in this. That would be quite cool just to cut down trees with vehicles and all that. Maybe in a future update. But yes, that is it. Oh, I think... Yeah, look at that go. Dear God, we've got the tree space program and... I have no idea what just happened there. But okay, we fell on our back and the hydrogen tanks exploded. But that is it for the Rumbler Transport. It's a very interesting design and a solid transport vehicle if you are interested in downloading one and using it in your survival game or whatever. So a link to it will be in the description below if you did want to play around and try it yourself. And I'll be back with another showcase video some point soon. Bye bye.